Shalom, brothers and sisters and family. Shalom. Welcome to the live Shabbat class. This is your host, Jeremiah Israel, and welcome to another Sabbath day. Before I get started, those who are new to my channel or those who are return visitors, if you not have if you have not done so already, please hit the like and the subscribe button. It's free 99. Doesn't cost you a thing to hit hit the button to return to the channel if you're seeking to learn knowledge. I'm not teaching camp philosophies. I'm teaching according to the King James 1611 Bible, including the Apocrypha. So uh, I, I, I don't visit other books outside of that because there's a lot of uh, knowledge inside of the, that Bible. You know, I want to get familiar with the law. I want you to get familiar with the law. Before you go to the book of Jubilee and all these other books, the book of Yashir and all these other books, get book, get familiar with the books that has the two covenants, the old covenant and the new covenant. Get familiar with the law. Get familiar with, with Christ and, and, the, and the prophets before you venture out and start trying to get understanding elsewhere. Because if you don't understand that book, only thing you're gonna do is be confused in other books. Anyway, uh, this is a teaching ministry. I am seeking, looking to grow and grow each day, each week. I'm, my, my ministry is behind Jeremiah 29.5. Build ye houses and live in them. Plant ye gardens and eat the fruit thereof. The Most High God want us to build our own communities and live in our own community. Grow our own food. And eat the fruit there, eat the food that we grow. Because the fact is, our enemies is, are trying to kill us and we still standing in the middle of the road doing not a damn thing but marching up and down the street. Now, you know, people always say, you know, Psalms 94 and 16, who will rise up for me against the evildoer? When you're building your own communities, you're rising up for the Most High God. When, you, when, you, when you're growing the own, your own food, you're rising up for the Most High God to feed your people. Marching up and down the street, you ain't feeding nobody. You ain't building nothing. We don't have one community, but, you know, we got a lot of boots up and down the street. We got to change that. If you'd like to uh, support my ministry, go on to Amazon.com. I have a number of books. This is my last outing. Israelite Reconstruction. This book here gives you a, a, a I try to give you a clear-cut identity of what the prophets, what the priest, what the law, all of those things is required to get into the kingdom. What are we doing versus what the law says? If you want to get this book into the library, three things you must know. If you have a library card and you you uh to get into your local library, you you are uh, Need to know the author's name, Jeremiah Israel, the title of the book, Israelite Reconstruction, and this number down here where my hand is. This, this number, ISBN number. It's a number right there. It's an ISBN number. You can go, you can, in order to get that information, you can go on to Amazon.com, put in the search. Jeremiah Israel, put in the search line, Jeremiah Israel, hit enter, and all of my books that I've written under that name will come up. I have written a total of about eight, seven or eight, eight, probably eight books under that name. I've also written books under my given name, Stephen Ederson Sr. Prophet of Israel is one of my recommended, uh, if you're trying to learn about your God, Understand the prophets and understand what the Most High God sent the prophets for. 
So when you start having, when you have questions about things, is that against the law? If you don't see scriptures in the Bible that says it's against the law, nine times out of ten, out of ten, it's not, it's not unlawful, because people would make, you know, smoking weed unlawful. First Peter five and eight say, "Be ye sober, so you don't supposed to get drunk." You know, please ask because thirty one and uh, I forgot the number. 31 and probably 20-something says wine is good as life to a man if it be drink in moderation. So when you when people say, oh, drinking wine and drinking, no, if you're drunk, yeah, that's 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 a different thing. Now, at one time I was writing books this big. I don't write books this big anymore because Hebrews don't like to read. And, you know, this book is, you know, people, people will say, oh, that, you know, that book too big. And you know you get get intimidated by big books. Well, I don't read. I don't. I don't. Uh, I don't write big books anymore. Unless unless I have to. Unless unless the the information calls for me to write a book that large. My next book may be a, a close to a, probably three or three hundred pages, maybe almost four. Because right now, the, uh, the, where where I'm at, it's going to be pretty big, but it's it's required. Study Guide for the Kingdom is the last big book I wrote. That was almost 500 pages. Study Guide for the Kingdom, Volume One. Now, all of these books, if you if you want them available in the library, only thing you need to know is the name of the author, Jeremiah Israel. The name of the book and the ISBN number right here. This 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 number there. <coughs> and you can go to the library with that information, or you can go to their, their library site and request that that book be uh, made available. And, and most of the time, most of the time they will make it available for you. Anyway, let's get to our lesson. Shalom, Israel. This includes you so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. Those of the diaspora dispersed throughout the Americas, Africa, India, Europe, Asia, and the islands. Those of the sub-Saharan and the transatlantic slave trade. My topic today is biblical events. I'm still dealing with the women in Israel. Part eight, and this is uh, we're dealing with Esther. Still continue. Uh, where I stopped off at last week was for Mordecai's good deed, an adversary of the Jews was appointed. Now Mordecai was the uncle of Esther or uh, Hadassah. He raised her up from a child because both of her parents were dead. And he, he raised her up as his own daughter. So he reported to Esther that a couple of the uh, king chamberlains were, uh, 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 were going to attempt to lay hands on him. He reported that to Esther, and Esther reported it to the king. So they investigated the, the, the event. And they found out that that was going to happen, and they, they hanged the two guys that were going to try to put hands on the king. So, for Mordecai's good deed, an adversary of the Jews was appointed. When Mordecai saved King Ahasuerus from harm, a possible death, the king appointed a man second in command that hated the Jews. This was not the king's intention, but the Most High God plan because he delivers. It was the Most High God's plan because the Most High God is always going to bring an adversary to show you how great his greatness, just like he did in Egypt. Impossible odds, just like he's going to do again. Impossible odds against America and all of these great countries that are ruling the world right now. America, France, and all of them just Ruling the world. 
All of these things are necessary that are going on right now because the Most High God is going to show you his greatness. Esther 3 and 1. After these things did King Ahasuerus promote Haman, the son of Hamadetha, the Agathite, the Agite, and advanced him and set his seat above all the prince that were with him. King Ahasuerus promoted Haman and Agagite, a descendant of Agai. Source, I got a source for that. He's an Amalekite, a descendant of Esau. So he promoted Haman, a descendant of Esau. Oh, oh, oh. Edomite, 1 Samuel 15 and 8. And he took Agad, the king of the Amalekites, alive and utterly destroyed all the people with the edge of the sword. King Agad was from the tribe of Amalek, from the sons of Esau. Genesis 36 and 17. And Timnah was concubine to Eliphaz, Esau, Esau's son. And she bare to Eliphaz Amalek. These were the sons of Adah, Esau's wife. When you are reading the scriptures, it is very important to understand who your enemies descended from. King Ahasuerus appointed an Edomite above all the prince, second in command, only to him. This is who Haman was. Now, we, I'm going somewhere with, no, the Most High God is going somewhere with this. Because every time Esau is in command or near command, the destruction of the Jews is always on his mind. A destruction of the Israelites. Esther 3 and 2. And all the king's servants that were in the king's gate bowed and reverenced Haman, for the king had so commanded concerning him. But Mordecai bowed not, nor did, nor did him reverence. Mordecai didn't give a crap about, king, about Haman. He ain't bowing nothing. When Haman came out the gate, Mordecai was at the gate every every time and didn't bow. Just irked the hell out of Haman. Everybody bowing, but Haman, but Mordecai was like, man, the hell with that. I ain't bowing to this fool. All the king's subjects bowed to Haman and showed him respect except Mordecai because he was a Jew and the law pre prevented prevents him from doing so. Exodus 20 and 5. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord, thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. We ain't bowing down to nobody. The Most High God does not want the Israelites to bow themselves down to any person or their gods. Esther 3 and 3. Then the king's servant, which were in the king's gate, said unto Mordecai, Why transgressed thou the king's commandment? The king's servant wanted to know why Mordecai did not bow to Haman as the king commanded. This is very important for Israelites to understand. Just because you are in the land of your, your captors, that does not give you the right to transgress the laws of the Most High God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You don't transgress your God's laws. Just because you and your, your captors land? Ecclesiasticus 15 and 20. He had commanded no man to do wickedly, neither had he given any man license to sin. Israelites are not given the freedom to sin even when they are in a strange land. Esther 3 and 4. Now it came to pass when they spake daily unto him, and he hearkened not unto them, that they told him unto see where the Mordecai matters would stand. For he had told them that he was a Jew. I'm a Jew. I ain't bound to nobody. 
Mordecai told the king's servant that he was a Jew and he was not permitted to bow to any man. They told this to Haman. Esther 3 and 5. And when Haman saw that Mordecai bowed not, nor did him reverence, then was Haman full of wrath. Haman the Edomite became very upset when he witnessed Mordecai refusing to bow before him. Esther 3 and 6. And he thought scorn to lay hands on Mordecai alone, for they had showed him the people of Mordecai. Wherefore, Haman sought to destroy all the Jews that were throughout the whole kingdom of Ahasuerus, even the people of Mordecai. Now, just because one man pissed you off, you want to kill everybody that's linked to him. Just because one black man pissed you off, you want to kill all the black folks related to him. Just like some of these white folks here, one you know, you you look at some of the some of the uh the work of some of these people, all these abortion clinics, uh, uh what's this lady name? I the one that started uh, started the uh, the uh, Planned Parenthood. And, and look at Buddy uh, 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 Billy Boy. All these billions of dollars buying up all of this land creating foods and stuff to kill people. Genetically modified to, to attack certain DNA. And nobody's saying a thing. Just like when the Nazis was killing all these so-called Jewish people, no, everybody stood to the sideline and said nothing. Now everybody appalled at, at whatever they're doing. That's, that's what's going on right now. But everybody see it, but nobody's speaking. Nobody with power is saying anything because they don't want to ruffle feathers. That's all right. You don't have to say nothing anyway on the behalf of the, the Most High God's people because the Most High God is not going to allow you to destroy his people. He gave you stipulations already. Y'all ain't read it. Esther 3 and 6. And he thought scorn to lay hands on Mordecai alone, for they had showed him the people of Mordecai. Wherefore Haman sought to destroy all the Jews that were throughout the whole kingdom of Ahasuerus, even the people of Mordecai. Now this was thought, you know, Mordecai, you know Haman didn't like the Jews anyway, because that little bitch shouldn't have, shouldn't have want, made, made him want to kill all the Jews. This is the perpetual hatred that the Most High God is telling you in Ezekiel 35 and 5. Haman at first wanted to lay hands upon Mordecai, but he was shown that all the Jews acted this way. Now, Haman wanted to destroy all the Jews. How can a small thing such as this cause a man to want to kill you? When you know the reason. Oh, that's that's their law. They don't vow. They don't vow to uh they don't bow to nobody because you know they God told them not to. Esther three and eight. And Haman said unto King Ahasuerus, There's a certain people scattered abroad and dis and dispersed among the people in all the provinces of thy kingdom, and their laws are diverse from all people, neither keep they the king's law. Therefore, it is not for the king's prophet to suffer them. Now, they don't keep your laws. These people are just despicable people. They don't keep none of your laws. Like, you know, you tell them not to kill nobody, they don't keep that law. They just do what the hell they want to do. The Haman went in there with, with you know, you know, this is this is the thing that Esau does all the time. You know, if you can't recognize the devil in the Bible, you can't recognize his works, then y'all, you know, like I said, you, you have no spirit in you. You have no spiritual sense. Because Esau today is still telling you half-truths. 
Yes, the things he tell you are true. Like, he got you believing that all the laws are done away. He don't say all the laws. He told you the laws are done away with. Which laws? But you have no spiritual sense to be able to divide what he's saying and say, you know what? Oh, that's how Esau does. He go and tell you some truth. But he told he told a, a, a king of Hosseras, what he told him? Their laws are diverse from all people. Neither keep they the king's law. The king's laws. Now, he, he don't made a big lie because the only law that, that they didn't keep was not bowing down to Ahamon. But he said they don't keep none of your laws. Basically, basically what he said to, to, to King Ahasuerus. Now, now begins the plotting of Haman to eliminate all of the Jews. There's always an Edomite in the world who hates the Most High God's people and have gained power to plot, plan, and destroy them. Haman is not no different from Margaret Sanger. Oh, that's the woman I was trying to tell you about. And others who have gained power through finance, finances of through financing of politicians and health organizations. You will find the descendants of Amalek in the midst of evil. Haman was telling King Ahasuerus half truths. Haman was accusing the Jews of being lawbreakers to the king, simply because Mordecai would not bow to him. Haman was one of the king's top advisors, and the king did not verify it because he had no reason to doubt Haman. He had no reason. Esther 3 and 9. If it pleases the king, let it be written that they may be destroyed, and I will pay 10,000 talents of silver to the hands of those that have the charge of the business to bring it into the king's treasuries. Haman the Edomite was going to use 10,000 talents of, king, of, of silver to get this accomplished. Esther 3 and 10. And the king took his ring from his hand and gave it unto Haman, the son of Hamad, Hamidatha. Hamidatha, yeah. The uh, uh, Agagite, the Jews' enemy. The king gave Haman his ring that would allow Haman to write letters on behalf of the king to all 127 provinces to further his plan to eliminate the Jews. Do you think that Margaret Sanger's Planned Parenthood, Tuskegee Experiment, where the U.S. government was injecting Israelite men with syphilis, watching them die from 1932 to 1972, or the sterilization of Hebrews in Africa by, by Bill Gates claiming that he was giving them a tetanus shot? Do you think that these are coincidences? The Edomites who are responsible are related to Haman from the same tribe. I'm not saying every Edomite intended to do you harm, but it seems many who are in powerful positions have a track record of doing evil to Israelite people. That's all I'm saying. Because the fact is, our government itself has have been attacking us, and they're calling us the same people. We are not the same people because since we got out of slavery, our the, the U.S. government has been attacking black folks. The Tuskegee experiment was done by by the help, help the help uh, uh, the help arm of the government, the Planned Parenthood, the help arm of the government. Crack cocaine, CIA, another form of part of the government. Jim Crow laws, the government. Pig laws, the government. Prison lease system, government. 13th Amendment, government. Government don't mean you no damn good. So when y'all start thinking about the, that these, white, these good old white folks mean you some good, none of them mean you no damn good. Because hardly any of them stand, stand up for you. Because by the time they stand up for you, things are going definitely wrong. Right now, Bill Gates out there buying, buying land and, 
and trying to trying to implement these uh these uh these mRNA into the to the vegetables and stuff and sell it to the whole world. Everybody know what he's doing, but nobody's saying anything. Nobody with power saying anything. Because he's paying everybody. He's everybody he's paying. All, all these uh, WHO and all of these different organizations, he's on the board. So everybody just hush, hush. They're quiet. Esther 3 and 11. And the king said unto Haman, The silver is given to thee, the people also to do with them as it seemeth good to thee. Kings of Hosphorus gave Haman the 10,000 talents of silver, which is roughly $230 million. I have a source that, that calculates how, be, how much is, uh, what was it, 15 talents of silver? Ten thousand talents of silver. That's a lot of weight. This was approximately three hundred seventy-five tons of silver. Haman had a serious war budget to annihilate the Jews. He had three hundred and seventy-five tons of silver. A lot of weight to distribute it out to kill all the Jews. Now, see, the fact is, I, I like to be thorough in, in, in because like I said, you know, you ain't going to give one person 375 tons. You're going to give a lot of people that money to exterminate the Jews everywhere. Now, he had the king to give that money to him by his lie. Esther 3 and 12. Then were the king's scribes called on the 13th day of the first month. And there was written according to all that Haman had uh, commanded unto the king's lieutenant and to the governors that were over every province and to the rulers of every people of every province according to the writing thereof and to every people after their language. In the name of King Ahasuerus was it written and sealed after the king's ring. Now, he wrote this in a lot of different languages because King Ahasuerus over 127 provinces, you know, there was Jewish speaking people, there was, you know, people speaking all different types of languages. He he was a ruler of the, basically ruler of the world at this time. So King Ahasuerus uh, gave Haman authority to write these letters in all these different languages, all these different provinces to, to, to eliminate the Jews, sent letters to all of these different provinces in their language. Haman called the writers for the king to write letters to every province in every language of the people in each province and written in the name of King Ahasuerus and sealed with the ring that the king gave to Haman. Esther 3 and 15. The post went out being hastened by the king's commandment. And the decree was given in Shushan, the palace. And the king and Haman sat down to drink. But the city, Shushan, was perplexed. What the hell going on here? What? Gonna kill all the Jews? Everywhere? See, the thing about it is, you know, if you Israelites don't come to understand that right here, if Haman had his way, there wouldn't be none of us. There wouldn't be no more Jews. All these letters quickly went out according to the palace, including in the palace of Shushan, where Queen Esther resided, and Haman was sitting and drinking with the king. Everyone in Shushan was confused about the decree to kill all the Jews. It did not make any sense because Jews are not lawbreakers. They are commanded to be at peace with all, pe all men. 
Hebrews 12, 14, follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. You're not getting the kingdom by being a hellion. I don't care how Hebrew you claim to be. The decree is to follow be at peace with all men. You're not getting in the kingdom and just because, oh, I remember what you did. No, that ain't for you to decide, or you to judge, or you to do anything. Do as the Most High God tell you. Let him be your rock. You stand on him. He will, he will protect you. Because fact is, we don't have no military. You think you got a few guns, you, you, you're foolish. Who makes all the bullets? Who even makes the rifles? Y'all, we don't make nothing. So we have a God. We need to rely and stand upon him. We didn't have a military when we came out of Egypt. We were just we just came out of slavery. You think we was being soldiers in, in, in slavery? No. Yeah, we had probably had some brothers that knew how to fight, but we wasn't soldiers. And all the all the countries that we came up against, we were def we defeated because we had a God with us. Fighting for us. Huh. Okay, I'm over. Let me see. Mordecai reads the king's decree in Shushan. The letter that was written under the king's authority to destroy all the Jews was read by Mordecai, who had to get to Esther and put her in the right mindset to understand that she was the power through the Most High to protect her people. Esther 4 and 1. When Mordecai perceived that all that was done, Mordecai rent his clothes and put on sackcloth with ashes and went out into the midst of the city and cried with a loud and a bitter cry. Mordecai read the letter and was saddened by the news that the kingdom was out to destroy all of his people. The Jews, when you look at your, our present situation, do not think that it is something that is new. No. As long as Esau is in power, his goal is to destroy all of us. I believe that because the Bible, in my whole heart and my whole spirit, tells me that. When this white man is in power, his goal is to destroy the Jews, destroy all of us. Now, he, he, he can be subtle with it, but his goal is to destroy us because the fact is he's giving you things that are harmful to you. He ain't never meant you no good. I'm just keeping it 100. The, the, the God of my fathers is telling me that my enemies are set to destroy me. Don't trust them. I, the only thing I can do is tell my kids, look, your enemies don't try to kill you. Believe me or not. I, I ain't saying every white kid, every white kid, you know, every white person don't have power. You know, by and large, most white folks don't know what the hell going on, but those who are in power are looking to destroy you. Because, the, you know, the white folks that are not in power, the day-to-day -day white people don't have a clue about what's going on. They do not have a clue. Some of them see it, though. Some of some of either, some either might see it and they don't agree with it. They know it's wrong. They see it. They know who we are. They know who they are. And they, and they see the okie doke game that's being played. And this is not this is not talking to all white folks to say all white people are evil. No, not all white folks are evil. But there are some that are just wicked, and they, they are the ones that are in power. We're gonna stop right here. Um, this is be part nine.
Uh, we're going to pick up We're going to pick up um, momentarily. Uh, as I continue to say, you guys want to support my ministry? You can do. You can go to Amazon.com. This name right here. If you want to purchase Israelite Reconstruction, this is the, the hardcover. Uh, you can purchase this book, paperback, hardcover, or uh, ebook. I have a total of. Uh, 16 or 17 books available now to purchase. Feel free to like and subscribe to, to my uh, YouTube channel and so that you can be notified once I uh, post a new lesson. Return back to get some understanding especially on the Sabbath day. If you're not doing anything, look, you know, these lessons are no more than, that. most of them are not, no, no longer no longer than 40, 45 minutes at the most. I keep trying to keep some of them between 35 to 45 minutes. And you know, I, I have part one and part two of, of lessons each week. So just just uh, come, get some understanding, and be refreshed in the mind. Anyway, hope you guys got some understanding out of this with that family and friends. I like to say shalom. Shalom.